Shabbat Shalom. This is White Raptor News Ministries. How are we all doing? I hope that we're having a pleasant Sabbath. I was just uh, cleaning off my desk and came across the parable that I was trying to remember. And when I saw the parable, I didn't remember it. And I was like, oh, what's, what's this parable you're not remembering, huh? And I, in the minute I read it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember why I was trying to remember this parable now. <clears throat> so let us uh, begin this reading from uh, chapter, or chapter 12, verse 44 down. Then Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me alone, but the one who sent me. The word craft here is the one that sent Jesus Christ. So, Jesus was sent, all right, and Jesus is telling you that you do not believe in him alone, you believe in the one that sent him, which is, who who sent Jesus? He sent himself, he's God, right? I don't get it. So, Jesus sent himself, whoever, whoever sees me sees the one who sent me, well, that, uh would fall under a false pretense, I'd say, because in Exodus 33, uh, 20, so here he added, God, the Lord, here's the Lord who's speaking, my name, the Lord, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you, says the Lord, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord. So the creator, the self-existing eternal creator, is proclaiming that his name is the Lord. He's not proclaiming that his name is Jesus. He's not proclaiming that his name is Lord Jesus. He's not proclaiming that his name is Lord God. He is simply saying that I am the Lord. And he proclaims his name the Lord. And he will have mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy on. And he will have compassion on whom he chooses to have compassion on. But the Lord, the self-existing eternal creator, added, You cannot see my face, for no one can see my face and live. Well, hold on. If the Spirit of God is telling you no one can see his face and live, <clears throat> then this is a wash. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. Because Jesus is saying that he's God in this parable. Whoever sees me, See, he's the one who sent me. That's not true. You see? So, because this, what you got to understand here, Jesus, look, his his name is uh, Iesos because uh, there was no J in the dictionary. They just thought, hey, okay, let's make it a J. Okay? Jesus, the name of our Lord, and two other Israelites, and um, 24, 24 is the number of Iesos in Hebrew, the number for Jesus in Greek is 888, and if you break that number down, in a single digit, it comes to a six. Jesus is the Lord and two other Israelites. That's a red flag. I don't understand this. Would this be the two witnesses? Because like I think that Brother Sean and I, we're like the two witnesses. So you have the this God here. Who is it? For, the, for they loved praise for a... For they loved praise from men more than praise from God. What God is this? For they loved praise from men more than they praise, than more so from God, is a magistrate. You see, this is a spiritual war. <laughs> it's really deep. Too deep for the carnal mind to understand. Okay? I teach at a level that blows people away. 
So who is this Lord? Well, let's let's jump in with Isaiah chapter 1. And just go on for it. This vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reign of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hear me, you heavens. Listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. The Lord is the self-existing eternal creator. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donker, donkey its owner, manger. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nations. So there you go. Right there you see two different nations. Woe to the sinful nations. But God is talking about Israel here. <laughs> so you have two different nations. That's what... I teach, this is how I read the Bible today. I read it at every point and let you understand that God is talking about a people, two different two different nations of people. He's talking about the Isra Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, and then he's talking about the sinful nations, which is the Gentile nations. The nations are the, um, the United Nations, okay? Woe to the sinful nation. A people whose guilt is great, a broad of evildoers or brood, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. Again, the who? The Lord. Don't say that they've forsaken Jesus. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. This is why you're in captivity. This is why you're in punishment, because you have been turned over to the slave masters of this world. You are turned over to the evil because you turned your back on the creator, O ones of Israel. Not holy. When I say holy one, I say W-H-O-L-L-Y, the holy one of Israel, because the creator is all you can see and all you cannot see, okay? Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? The spirit, the self-existing eternal creator is talking to you, the Hebrew Israelites. Your whole head is injured. Your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness. Only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate. Your city is burned with fire. You fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you. Foreigners here <clears throat> are Gentiles, okay? Laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. Again, Gentile, daughter of Zion, Israel is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a cucumber field, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty has left us some savior. Survivors, oh boy, Whew, look it, <laughs> laughing about that one, this, woo, sorry about that, Almighty has left us a survivor, we would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the words of the Lord, the Lord, the who, the Lord, your ruler of Saddam, listen to the instructions of your creator. Your people of Gomorrah, you people of Gomorrah, the multitudes of your sacrifices, what are they to me? They're nothing, says the Lord. I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. goats. Well, if the Lord, the Spirit, the self-existing eternal creator, has no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats, then why are people sacrificing the blood of bulls and lambs and goats? That doesn't make sense. That should set a red flag. When you come to appear before me, 
who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Okay, now we're talking about a court. So right away, you're going into a magistrate. You're talking about man-made laws. Gentiles again, stop bringing meaningless offers, offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals, I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of burying them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you are offering many prayers, I am not listening. So, folks, who's not listening to you? Why? Why is the Creator turned? Why has He stopped listening? Because you, your hands are full of blood today. Both the Hebrew Israelite and the Gentiles, because that's what the that's what those that were created on the sixth day said that they uh that you were okay he the the devil himself is calling you hebrew israelites vipers that's what's so so funny about all of it now that the scales are removed from my eyes those that serve one god the creator the spirit the self-existing eternal one are called devil worshipers <laughs> can you imagine that a Trinity God, the one God's telling you not to worship any other gods, and a Trinity God is telling you to worship other gods. It's trying to worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as all one God. And then there's you have one God that's telling you that there is no other gods beside him. See, this is the bearing in, in the difference in the sight. The ones that serve the Spirit of God, the self-existing eternal one, are Hebrew Israelites, they're a nation of children with their faces black to the ground. Your hands are full of blood, he's telling you. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Turn from the Gentile ways. Turn from the cities of the Samaritans. Get out of those that serve evil and wicked deeds. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. That, that, you see, that's the problem with our government. They don't defend the oppressed. Okay. They actually, our government is creating a nation of sick people, folks. Mentally, emotionally, they're beating you down. Physically, they've turned you into nothing but, uh, slaves to their system. They've get to build their hot, uh, skyscrapers to the top of their towers to the skies. All on the backbone of you Christians that are sleeping. Okay? When are you going to wake up and understand that the governments rest on Jesus' shoulders? And it tells you so in Isaiah 9. Okay? Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Says the who? The Lord. The self-existing eternal one. In this case here though, I'm pretty sure that it's a magistrate. Once again, this Lord here will be a controller. Okay. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Bible Hub. I like to confirm the way that I read the Bible. No, I'm pretty sure now that it is the self-existing eternal creator. If it's all caps. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Says the who the Lord. Says the who the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlets, they will be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they will become like wool. Yes. Yes. So we know now that come, now that this says the Lord, this, this is the self-existing eternal one. 
Though your sins are like scarlets, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wood, wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. The good things of the land. You will eat the good things of the land. What grows from the land? Fruits, vegetables, berries, vegetation. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So the creator, the self-existing eternal creator, is telling you that if you resist and rebel against him, you're going to be met with the sword. And this is why you are all shooting and killing each other in the streets, man. You know, the the poverty rate between deaths of black people killing black people is far greater than those white people that would kill white people. The bottom line is, is somehow or another, Satan has reduced the, the Hebrew Israelite, the children of God, he's redu reduced you guys into such poverty and made you think that this money system is what matters and it's completely sorrowful. Okay, see how the fateful city has become a prostitute. That's everybody on TikTok, folks. She once was full of justice. This word here is just ice. There is no such thing as justice on this plane of existence because Lady Liberty wears a blindfold and the scales are uneven because their just is ice. There is no justice. Righteous used to dwell in her, but now murderers. Well, that's because their justice is just ice. It's nothing real. It's all hidden. It's all an agenda. This place is hell, folks. They love it. Your silver has become dross. Your choice wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. Oh, really? Does that tell you something? Do you think that's changed for today? Do you think our rulers haven't rebelled against the Spirit of God? Absolutely. They are partners with thieves. They are thick as thieves. They all love bribes. I keep trying to tell you that the government is dirty. They are the offenders. They are the rulers that fight in heavenly realms. They do not f defend the cause of the fatherless because they're trying to break the fathers. They're trying to break the widows. Cases does not come before them. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One, it doesn't say the Mighty Three there, does it, of Israel, declares, ah, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hands against you, children of Israel. I will thoroughly purge away your dross and remove all your impurities. I will store your leaders as in the days of old, your rulers as at the beginning. Afterward, you will be called the city of righteousness and the fateful city. Okay. Right here, folks. I will restore your leaders. Okay. There are no leaders. Okay. The spirit of God is your leader. Look to no man, whether he Hebrew Israelite or a Gentile man, even less so as a leader in the days of old. Serve the Spirit of God, and He shall take care of you. Afterwards, you will be called the right, the city righteousness in the faithful city. Faithful again. I don't do my, my, un, my overstanding of my Creator in faith. I don't do my overstanding of my Creator in hope. I go by common sense, reason, and logic. Zion will be delivered with justice, her penitent ones with righteousness, those that p repent against this, repent to the Spirit and ask for His Spirit to be placed on you and give it a, a true, divine, loving heart in your repentance 
to him. But rebels and sinners will both be broken, and those who forsake the Lord will perish. We'll see the spirit, the creator, he broke. He broke me, folks. He showed me my sins bef before the world. He showed me the world's sins, and then he showed me my sins. And uh, by all standards, I was in every worldly sin that there possibly could be. I was in fornication. I was lying. I was cheating. I was coveting. You know, I was chasing after women. I was a drunk. I was a drug addict. Uh, I was going to perish. So now I do what I is needed today for my, uh, to move forward so that I don't have to be this. You will be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. The sacred oaks, folks, are, where did the word sacred come from? It came from the word secret. And where did the word secret come from? It came from the word secretion. Secretion is about the secret. The secret is the oil, the anointing oil that's produced in the corpus callosum. This is an anointing oil. It's a dimethylene tryptamine in medical terms. It's created in our brain and this drug is called DMT. It produces a hallucination. Our lives are a complete hallucination. That's right. You will be disgraced because of the gardens that you have chosen. Yes, the gardens, the fruit that you shouldn't have touched. You will be like an oak with fading leaves, like a garden without water. The mighty man will become tender and his work a spark. Both will burn together with no one to quench the fire. So that's the first chapter of uh, Isaiah, folks. Uh... I um, I pray and bless the children of Israel with all my my body, mind, and soul, my heart, and might, and strength. Every cell, every fiber that comprises me of flesh, I submit to the Creator, who is one God. I love Him. I truly do. And I hope somewhere along the line that these messages... <clears throat> may help you out. I'm sorry I've had laryngitis for the last couple of days. It's kind of why I haven't really been doing any videos, but um, I'm going to get this one uploaded. So let's give all praise and glory to the mighty most high, our creator who is one God. Blessings to you, the children of Israel and the stranger. That's the Gentile. All right. Just like me, I'm a Gentile folks. But today I'm a Gentile that serves one God. And I pray and I beg and I plead for the Spirit of God to be placed upon me so that my soul will return to the Creator because the soul without the Spirit on it returns to the fire. This is White Raptor News Ministries. <laughs>